That's Dick, that's 11 o'clock. So uh, thanks for hanging on those that have joined a little bit early. Um, today, we're going to talk about the Essex Schools energy basket that you may well have heard uh, quite a bit about. Uh, quite a pertinent thing for a lot of schools that are looking at leaving the Essex County Council contract from 1st of October. And we just want to go through that as an option for you, uh, hopefully quite an attractive one, but also what the alternatives are to it. Uh, and, and understand the benefits of, of that group purchase deal. So my name's Chris Jeremy, I'm the Head of Business Development, um, and we'll be going through this with you today. So we've got uh, webinar etiquette just to, to quickly kick off. Um, so just as an FYI, everybody is on mute, uh, so there's no background noise or distractions, no dogs barking and you know all that jazz. Uh, and uh, there will be a Q&A session at the end where my esteemed colleague, Jen, will be going through those with you later on. Uh, so if you want to ask a question, please type it into the question box. Uh, and uh, you can do that anytime during the presentation, and then Jen will, will present that at the end, uh, and you'll find the Q&A box by clicking on the bottom panel. Uh, I think it's on the bottom, it might well be on the top, it looks like it's on top for me, uh, which will reveal the box. Um, and just to let you know as well, this webinar is being recorded we should get this on to our website uh, under the event section for uh, it'll be done today. So if you if you need to scoot off, I uh, appreciate it's a busy time right now. So uh, you know, if you need to refer back, you can do. Wonderful. So just to kick things off, then we're going to have a, a quick poll uh, and this should be done all via the Zoom app. So it's quite funky. Uh, so how are you getting on with your New Year's resolutions? So if you can uh, tick an option. Uh, I must admit, I think I fall into the, uh, I've not set any as yet. I'm, I'm always on a diet, as what most people will know anyway. So uh, the uh, chocolate brownie probably meant that last night I broke any um, sort of resolution that was linked to it. But uh, for those of you uh, wanting to partake in this, you uh, have a little selection there. So if we uh, just give a couple of seconds, Jen, if you can flash up the results. Uh, so, oh, 66% sit in the same boat as me then. Neither, none of us have uh, bothered setting any, <laughs> whether that's because we could be bothered or we just don't believe in it. Um, there's a few struggling maybe with the dry January. I think the date for that where most people uh, uh, overcome that one was uh, on the 14th of January. I think that was the, the key date where most people then started drinking again. Uh, and 19%, very positive there. 19% of people doing well so far. So congratulations to those. Very good. Cool. Um, just a bit about me. I don't really like doing this bit, to be honest, but um, yeah, I've been with Zenergy for nine years uh, and uh, a lot of people might well have heard of my name. I used to work for a property consultancy based in Chelmsford, uh, where I moved down in 2005. Uh, and so I used to do a lot of service and maintenance contracts and things for the schools throughout Essex. Uh, so it's, it's nice seeing all the names on the list, actually, because a lot of you I've, I've kind of worked with and helped over the years uh, in some form or another. Uh, but energy's always been kind of my bag, if you like, uh, as well as doing all these other bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, I've worked now uh, with schools uh, since 2005. So for that 20, no, I can't do math, 16 years, uh, moving into sort of 17 years now. So uh, yeah, a long time. And there's my family. Uh, I'm a family kind of guy. Everything sort of relates to them and uh, dragging them out for dog walks uh, and generally polishing off with, with some food and, and beer as well. So that, that's kind of me. That's the, the four things in, in life that I love. Uh, so we'll quickly move on. But about Zenergy, so why would you, why do you think about uh, using us? Um, so customers are at the center of everything we do. That is a, a fundamental to us. Um, you know, we, we don't uh, take anything other than, than excellent and, and uh, you know, great customer service. We, we liken ourselves to sort of the John Lewis of, of the industry. Uh, we're reliable, we're, we're there, uh, very helpful. Uh, hopefully all of you have got relatively good experience with John Lewis, but um, we, you know, we're a good value for money um, alternative uh, within the industry. Um, so founded in 2003, uh, and it was always the intention to support schools uh, from the outset and where, where the company kind of um, started its roots from was with a portfolio of schools and that, that obviously grew quite substantially and um, you know under credibility there we, we now manage 3,130 schools uh, as of when I did the, the look at this on, on Friday I think it was last week uh, 375 of which are, are local to us in Essex 
Um, and uh, I guess it's important to, to understand as well that a lot of, of the business has come from word of mouth uh, and also where we are um, sort of not necessarily pushed, but recommended by various other um, leading educational bodies such as the ISBL, ASCL, uh, BISA. Um, and we support you know, various different school business forum groups and uh, testament to that is the uh, the academies, the Essex Academies uh, event that we put on for them on the 21st of September at Highlands Park in Chelmsford last year. Hopefully uh, some of you managed to make it to that one. There is a date for your diary for this year as well uh, in June this year. Um, so uh, hopefully we can we can bring all that back to life again. Uh, I like to feel like we are loved by customers. Um, you know, we have a, a very high retention rate, 97.8%. Um, you know, the, the few customers that do leave us uh, are generally where there might be perhaps like a big multi-academy trust that schools form part of and, and therefore have no choice other than to sort of dovetail into to what they're doing, whatever that might be. Uh, but then saying that we do manage a, a lot of multi-academy trusts as well, uh, most of the big ones uh, for sure. We uh, administer the ISBL's OGU compliant energy framework. Um, and I think that's got another year or two left on that as well. So we can effectively do mini competitions as part of that framework uh, for any educational establishment. So obviously you guys will be able to, to benefit from that. We also do have a competitive field of suppliers. And I think that's really uh, quite an important thing where you often where you speak to some brokers and they, they they say to you that they do work with up to so many suppliers, but realistically, they generally are, um, you know, they're do doing business with one or two suppliers. We, we actively promote a very um, broad range of suppliers. Uh, we meet with them all uh, quarterly or perhaps three times a year uh, at worst, uh, and we manage our relationships really very, very carefully um, so that we're giving them the feedback. We like to make sure that they're, they're improving, get, getting better. And likewise, they help us to improve. And, and uh, uh, I think we're you know, renowned really within the industry as uh, the kind of consultant that suppliers and customers want to work with. Um, so uh, yeah, very positive there. Uh, simple to do business with. Uh, I'm, I'm always keen on keeping things as simple as they possibly can be. Um, uh, I think that just helps everyone with understanding what, what's going on. And, um, you know, that can relate to anything from a, uh, an energy audit to um, you know, us, us doing a, a procurement exercise for you. Uh, the, in terms of uh, our fee, um, you know, it's important to, to understand that we, we do get paid and that payment comes from the supplier. Uh, often that, that payment is offset by the, um, you know, the tendering, the competitive tendering that we do. Um, you know, it's much more likely that you would get a cheaper price for coming through us with our fee uh, built in than it would be that you went to a supplier directly, for instance. Um, and I suppose while we're just talking about that, I guess it's important to, to understand as well with procurement of supply contracts. Most suppliers have at least three or four different products on offer. Uh, and it's really important that you compare apples with apples with, within the energy industry. And it's very, very notoriously difficult to do uh, where products don't necessarily align. Um, from one supplier to another as well. So it's, there's lots to sort of bear in mind with it all. But we have no favoritism over suppliers. We do have uh, an, an analyst, uh, an, an, an analytics, <laughs> I get the word out, um, in terms of like what supplier performs best for us, uh, in terms of the billing, in terms of the support service, in terms of, uh, you know, various different elements of, you know, do they provide PDF invoices for us to validate? Or do they provide it on a spreadsheet? Um, all these sort of different elements, um, and they will ultimately affect the, the service that you're delivered. So where we look at the value for money from a supplier, we analyze all of that, uh, and uh, we'll present that back to you as to these are the decisions and, and why um, they're, they're suggested. So we've got lots of local success stories, but I thought I'd just kick off with uh, one that, that we actually won an award for, the top one there for working with the Alpha Trust uh, up in Colchester, Manning Tree High School. Um, we actually um, secured £402,000 worth of funding for them. So this is, this is a real big push for us. We're, um, you know, really 50% of our business is geared up at procuring contracts and managing that really well as our kind of bread and butter. And actually half of our business is now all about carbon reduction and energy savings. So it's, it's much more of a wraparound um, one-stop shop and, and we facilitate everything internally. 
Um, so yeah, we're, we're definitely one of the biggest consultants that you could possibly work with within the industry. So um, in this case, they actually saved uh, more than 21,000 pounds in energy costs, but, but also critically um, reduced their CO2 and they're pushing towards um, basically decarbonisation of their heating systems. So that included boiler works, um, uh, it also included things like solar PV, improved insulation, that sort of thing. So um, yeah, it's a, very proud of, of that one. Um, we also did exactly the same exercise, decarbonisation plans for Essex County Council, funnily enough as well, we've, we've done various different projects for them, I think over the years, and um, we surveyed 180 of their, their core corporate buildings um, including there's about 20 schools in there as well. So you may well have already met our, our engineers, some of the schools. Uh, and also uh, water surveys are quite a nice one as well, where um, pretty much every survey we do comes about with some astronomical savings where we've identified leaks or to automatically flushing devices that just keep flushing, um, you know, all those sorts of things uh, that so often can go, um, you know, forgotten about and uh, fresh eyes tend to pick up on them. So. You know, just to give you a bit of a feel as to our, as our breadth of um, service, really. So just to, to think about the energy procurement side of things and sort of bring it back to that, what is the single most important factor um, for you to select your, your new energy provider? So we've got the number of suppliers that they work with, uh, the reputation for good service. So if you can just pick one, you know, if, if you had to pick one, I'm sure that you probably think, well, it's at least three or four of these. Uh, but what would be the top one for you? And I think it's just an interesting one to, to sort of rust to mull over, really. So value for money, someone that checks my bills before I pay them, someone that can help me reduce my consumption. Let's give you a couple of seconds to select that one. So, Jen, you can show the poll results. Do, 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 do. Ooh, value for money. Yeah, I guess that kind of sucks into like all of the elements in a way, doesn't it? So we've also got some reputation for good service uh, and someone that can uh, help reduce my consumption. So 8% of you went for those two options and then 3% went for someone that checks my bills before I pay them as well. Very interesting. Cool, okay, so the basket. So this, this, this sort of uh, notional thing of, you know, what is a basket, how does it work? So a basket is something that I've personally done for Essex schools ever since I've worked with Essex schools back in 2005. The, the theory has always been that the schools within the basket trust us to get them the best uh, prices available from the market. Um, and they delegate authority to me and the team to, to do that on their behalf. And the, the, the obviously the benefits that sit around that we will go through in a second, but it's a way of achieving a slightly better price on that same day when you're you're pricing a deal a supplier will always look at a, a bigger volume of opportunity and um you know speak to their managers speak to their managers managers and get director approval to go in at lower margins to win business um so you know i think it's important to understand that where we're looking at you know if we did an individual tender for you the market goes up and down potentially three, four, five percent within a day. Actually, interesting to that, I was just looking at the report before this, this webinar and we've seen a 10% drop in price today compared to yesterday. That's, that's how volatile the markets actually are. And you know, it's, it's crazy at the moment with, with things, how they're moving forward. But uh, <clears throat> if you looked at the same price on the same day as an individual, as opposed to within the basket, the basket will give you a cheaper price generally with, with pretty much every supplier I've ever, ever worked with. Um, so uh, yeah, in terms of like the logistics of that, we've got a commitment is required by the 1st of March. Uh, and you should have seen, if you look at the actual authorization document to go into the basket, you can cap the duration on there. I think you can also cap the level of increase, albeit I wouldn't necessarily suggest you did that because you'll end up in a bit of a catch 22 on that. If, if you demand a 10% price rise and the market's at 80% price rise, um, you know, there's just no way we'd be able to sign off any contracts for you. So you know, I think sometimes you, you have to delegate to us to do the best for you. And if you feel that we haven't done the best for you, then clearly you're not going to want to renew with us uh, either. So, um, yeah, we do. I, I would actively say to you, if you want to cap the duration of the contract, then that's that's, you know, absolutely within your prerogative. 
you know, if you know, some schools might be forming part of a multi-academy trust in a year's time, therefore they don't want to go, you know, into a long-term deal or, um, you know, they you may be having some building work done, that sort of thing, uh, in which case you might want to cap it. Uh, my job in all of this is to keep you informed. So once we uh, get to the 1st of March, uh, I will be sending you know, regular updates to you all to say, this is what the market's doing. This is the budgetary you know, impact as I feel right now. Um, and this is you know, the activity that we've done so far. And this is what we're, we're kind of looking at in terms of different um, procurement options. Uh, I can also at that point confirm how many schools are part of the tender as well to give you a bit of peace of mind uh, around that kind of that collaborative purchase uh, volume. Uh, and uh, this is something that I will, will be doing, as I mentioned there. So uh, I will be collaborating all of the, the um, contracting entities together, all of the tender information together uh, and going out to tender to our, our standard 15 suppliers uh, where contract values require OGU. Uh, compliance then clearly that that list will be um i'll be refining that so that we only look at the um the og um suppliers uh, as part of that 15 which are 12 of them uh we will make the decision on your behalf with your best interests in mind uh, and that could mean that we enter into a fixed contract it could be a flex contract with the markets being as volatile as they are right now um, flex contracts are looking very attractive, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised that we don't go with, with that, whereby basically we spread out the purchases uh, along the wholesale markets leading up to your contract start date uh, and into the future. And it's, it's very similar, actually, to your existing contracts um, with Essex County Council. The one bit that I would point out that would be very different on it is that we like to fix the non-commodity aspects to where a lot of you will see on your NPOWER invoices at the moment through Essex, um, there are about 10 lines of different charges that you see on there and reconciliations month to month, quarter to quarter. It, they're very, very messy. That's something that we try and move away from. Again, it's that simplicity of, well, you don't need to have it like that. You can just fix it as one unit rate that incorporates all those lines. So we try and simplify the flex as well. Um, but that, that's a way of us helping to achieve a, a more sort of market reflective, more risk averse strategy for you. So uh, as I say, look out for that. If there is a really attractive fixed deal on the market, then you know we may well go fixed as well. So I wouldn't like to necessarily uh, pin my uh, uh, sort of thoughts to the master on that one as yet, but uh, so we will then make that decision in terms of who, who looks the most attractive supplier and what product um, you know, that they're offering, again, makes uh, the most attractive option. And again, that might be where actually the fully fixed option looks the best. It might be that actually there's a, um, an all-inclusive product that, that looks attractive. And when you incorporate all of the charges um, that we believe will be passed on and, and be incurred, they, they, they look more attractive. So you know, leave that to us to, to make all those right decisions for you on that. Uh, and then at Renewal, you'll be offered the opportunity to carry on into our baskets. We do operate uh, various different baskets like every year. Uh, where we have industry, we have healthcare, um, sort of schools, uh, colleges, universities, all opting into the various different baskets. We're keeping this one separate at the moment because everyone's in this sort of Essex situation and we feel like the number's going to be substantial in itself to justify having a basket. I mean, to be fair, if you had sort of four or five schools in, in a group um, purchase straight away, you, you're getting an economy of scale there and um, start to incorporate some of the big secondary schools and things and you know suppliers will really want to take notice so that leads us on nicely to the next slide so economy of scale uh, purchasing power we've got 22 sites currently signed up uh, including a couple of big secondary schools as well that obviously bring some some decent volume um, and some various different primary schools we're we're thinking obviously where we manage like 375 schools already in in Essex there's not massive amounts still left in the Essex County Council pot, to be fair. Most people kind of got fed up with that situation maybe about four or five years ago. But um, for those that, that sort of stuck it out, um, we're, we're expecting the likely numbers to be in the region of sort of 50 to 60 schools, uh, at least that, that sign up to us uh, through the basket. And obviously there might be some that decide to, to not go into the, the basket deal uh, and do it individually. So what we will always do is um, get at least three supplier quotations. 
generally uh, I'll start off with six, seven quotes from various suppliers and I'll whittle it down to the top three. Um, and then um, I'll present to you on the day where we sign off the deals, I'll then present to you the rates that we've secured on your behalf and, and locked in with the suppliers. Um, generally that'll be you know, a few days after the event uh, when it, everything's kind of been confirmed and, and you know, formally secured and what have you, and I've got copies of contracts and what have you, but um, we always make sure that your finance regs are covered, basically, uh, if you delegate the authority, authority to us. The, the big benefit as well is that where I've got an LOA that has your signature on it to say, go ahead and do it, I can negotiate really hard with that supplier on the day. So suppliers will quote in the morning based upon the market graphs uh, from their traders that, that, that first thing. Um, and what they'll do is include a, an element of margin to cover the day's movements up and down. And you can imagine with the market being so volatile at the moment, it goes up and down a lot. So the margins that the suppliers put in to cover themselves um, are a little bit fatter than they normally would be. Now, <clears throat> where they know that I'm ready to sign off a deal, uh, I'll say to them, look, we're ready to go. Can you give me your very, very best price? You know, I can negotiate. I can say to them, uh, we've got three other suppliers that want this and, and they're 500 pounds cheaper. Can you do anything? You, know, you can really push hard on that and, uh, and negotiate and know that ultimately I could sign that off before the markets then change again. Um, so it's, it's really important, that feature. Whereas where we deal individually with schools, um, you know, we give you uh, the prices on the day around lunchtime uh, and you have till about four o'clock to sign them off. And, um, you know, it's very hard to then negotiate because the market may well have gone up by the time um, you've actually signed the deal and come back to us on that. So, yeah, it definitely helps that one as well. Obviously, it's hassle free. You just delegate the decision to us. So you don't have that, that stress of deciding, do you do 12 months? Do you do three years? Do you, you, know, do you go with Eon because they're the cheapest, but their service is rubbish? Or do you go with a slightly more expensive uh, supplier that um, are renowned for, for their billing or whatever? Who knows? Um, we ensure uh, best value for everyone. Um, and I will sort of really labor the point on this as well. This is something that I, I definitely do do. So I would never put you in a contract with one supplier that we deem is the cheapest overall. Um, you know, generally, uh, let's say for gas, there might be two or three suppliers that are very competitive across the field. Um, and you know, some schools might benefit from going with one supplier compared to a 5% increase from the, the overall cheapest supplier. In that case, we'd always go with the, the, the supplier that's the cheapest for that, that site. And suppliers sometimes will say, well, sorry, but you've not given us enough volume um, for us to be able to um, you know, justify taking one site out and cherry picking that one site. But that, that's a very, very rare occurrence. And, and generally, they'll be happy to lock anything in um, as opposed to locking everything in. So, um, so we, I do always look out for, for sites that, you know, it's not always beneficial. Interpretations of standing charges across suppliers often can be very, very different. So um, yeah, always, always keen on, on making sure that everyone gets the best that's on offer. Uh, green electricity contracts is something that I would promote going for, and uh, I will be looking for green electricity contracts as well as smart metering as part of the contract as well. So we'll put some, uh, some specifications together around that uh, to make sure, again, that we're comparing apples with apples. So clearly, a lot of this uh, boils down to trust. Um, and uh, it's fair to say that the schools have always trusted me and, and trusted Energy to do a good job for them. And, and I believe you know, firmly that we have always done a good job. And you don't need to go far to find other schools that use us and no doubt will we'll, um, you know, endorse our, our service. Uh, the, the disadvantage of the basket specifically is, is just that you lose that choice. You, if you want to make the judgment over the contract lengths and who the supplier is, then it's absolutely fine for us to, to pull you out of the basket and just price you as and when you want us to price you. You know, you, you can happily select the date. We can price on that day. We can present all the options to you. Um, ultimately, if it's a fixed price, you would have to make a decision on that day. Uh, or we can then refresh on the day that's convenient with you. And it might be when the chair of governors is available to sign off or, or whatever, but um, you know, more than happy to, to go through that process with you and build a strategy with you as an individual site. It's absolutely no issue at all. Um, so don't feel like it's the basket or nothing. 
um, it's it's up to you, you know, how you, how you want to proceed with it. Uh, obviously, some governing bodies like to, to actually authorise the actual contract. Um, again, you know, that's absolutely cool. No issue at all. Um, and, and yeah, um, that's just the point I've already made there at the bottom. Uh, so why choose energy? You know, uh, there, there's various different options out there. Uh, the one thing I would definitely, the one point I would uh, labour again is do not go with hard hitting brokers that are really, really pushy. If you're getting five or six phone calls a day from a broker um, trying to sell you a service or sell you a price, um, there's generally a really good reason for that, that they're so pushy. Um, and I, I would always promote getting everything in writing. Um, and, and yeah, please just be very, very careful on, on who you go with. Um, the CCS, I think YPO have been mentioned by Essex County Council um, you know, as an option for you. And again, I think, you know, CCS do a, a decent job and I think YPO do a decent job uh, in terms of procurement. Uh, but, but ultimately, the, the major disadvantage of those is that they tend to be quite restrictive in terms of the suppliers that you can go with. And also the, uh, the actual support service is generally not existing. Um, so hence a lot of, uh, actually there's some statistics around that as well, thinking about it, like where uh, we've taken on far more customers uh, from CCS and YPO than they've actually like, taken from us, if that makes sense, because people see that the bills aren't monitored, consumption is not being checked, uh, estimated bills aren't being looked at, uh, the VAT uh, and the climate change levy is often incorrect as well. If you need any advice around that for your school, uh, more than happy to, to let you know on that. I think there was a broker actually that was going around telling a load of community status schools that they didn't have to pay climate change levy. If you're one of those, just be careful on that because you do need to pay climate change like your community state of school. Uh, it's all the other ones that have a loophole because uh, they're classed as charities from HMRC. Um, I've already talked about brokers. Uh, yeah, so just be careful on that one. Uh, why are we different? So we're uh, committed to delighting our customers. You get a dedicated account manager. Uh, they are more than likely than not to be based in our Essex office as well. So if you need anyone to come out and check something that might look a bit odd with your meter or, or whatever it might be, they can come out. I can come out. Um, you know, we're, we're locally based and, and really happy to, to assist and you know, bring the service to life, really. So we, we check all our invoices before payment is taken. <clears throat> so. By default, you know that you've got peace of mind when you get that bill that's been checked. It matches the contract that we've secured. It matches the consumption that we expect. Our system automatically does those checks as well. Um, and if there's any issues, we deal with the supplier and, and we rectify those faults for you. I would say that energy suppliers generally, are, you might well have experienced it with, with SSC and NPower, who you're with at the moment, but you know, their, their service is not great. They can take weeks to come back on certain queries. And that only seems to have got much, much worse during COVID. So, uh, you know, we we do the best of, of a bad situation to try and alleviate all that stress and hassle and sitting on hold and all that from you. Um, but, you know, ultimately, we can't cushion you from everything if, uh, you know, supplies are meltdowns here and there. Uh, and we do have this uh, really great PEPI, so Positive Energy Pack Interactive, so effectively a portal, <laughs> um, where you can track your consumption, you can look at your costs, uh, effectively pulls out all of the elements of your invoices and puts it into a portal and, and allows you to, to, to flick and uh, change, you know, different parameters. And you might want to look at, you know, how's your consumption changed year on year for the last four years you've been a customer? Um, or, uh, you know, how are you, how are you doing in, ter in terms of your usage during COVID compared to our contracted um, predictions of what we think you're going to use? So we use a, an average educational customer, <coughs> excuse me, to predict your your consumption and you know it's very interesting to see where you're performing against that see if you're going to be on budget or not um, and as i said we are an end-to-end -end energy service from procurement to compliance so we do do uh things like energy certificates um we are very keen on helping people along that pathway to net zero and whatever that kind of means to you really um it might be that you know you're interested in uh sort of a funded solar pv project that's something that we uh, have just launched actually um, similar sort of things lots of lots of schools and multi-calorie trusts at the moment wanting EV charge points so 
our engineers will go down and do a feasibility study for them uh, to, to let them know how much it's going to cost and, and what's what implications there are for that. Um, and also look out for Salix uh, this year and the grants that they'll be given, basically free money to look at decarbonizing your heating systems and, and getting rid of your, uh, your fossil fuel burning boilers and moving across to an alternative. And, and that's quite a complicated uh, thing in itself. You know, how do we move away from gas reliance, heat, gas fired heating systems? Um, so, yep, we can do all of that. Um, so, again, just to, to talk about the basket side of things, um, can you just let me know if there's anything further you require? Um, and uh, if you obviously fill this in honestly, we'll follow up with you after the after the webinar if you need anything else uh, of any sorts. And uh, yeah, we'll utilize the information for it. Jen's busy behind the scenes, totting up the calculator. Drum roll, please. Cool. So uh, we've got four people, 11% want to have a little bit more information. Uh, uh, eight out of the 36 needs uh, one of us to contact you. So that's cool. We'll do that. Um, 19 have said all the information that you need. Fantastic. Um, and then five have said to sign me up. <laughs> Fab. Thank you very much. Cool. Um, so next steps. Uh, so if you decide that you do want to uh, work with us, it doesn't have to be in the basket or, um, you know, or the other way, uh, you just need to fill in an LOA. If you want to be in the group purchase, then it's a specific LOA that you fill in for that, which is called the, the Zen sign LOA. Um, otherwise, it's just like the standard one. Uh, we just need copies of your bills. Please let me major on the fact that it needs to be a copy of each of your bills. Um, let us know if, if it is the basket that you're interested in, and obviously we can support you with, with that. Um, and speak to any of us. Uh, so some of you might have already been dealing with Ashley, uh, Jamie and the team. Um, you know, carry on speaking to whoever you're speaking to, and I'm always here to help, so just give me a shout. Uh, and this is a little plug for my, my little conference that, that we did last year. We had 107 people come to this last year as well, so I'm, I'm hoping we can get it to 150 this year, and uh, we get equally brilliant sunshine in June. Um, so yeah, please do come along to the Highlands Park event and drop me a note on that if you're interested. We've not done all the flyers and things as yet, uh, but I'm sort of trying to judge COVID a little bit to make sure that it's, it's definitely going to be okay to do. But it's a bit of an outside event as well as a bit internal. So uh, we balance COVID quite nicely at that. Come along and uh, have an afternoon tea with us. Um, there's the details. I've not put my face on there because you don't want to see my face, but um, all the information there in terms of email addresses and mobile numbers are given as, as well. So uh, feel free to jump in. And I think that is everything. So um, I think there's a few questions by the looks of the thing at the top. So um, yeah, if uh, Jen, if you want to go through them. Thanks, Chris. That was really useful. Um, so yes, we've had a few questions in. So I'll just start from the top. Thank you, Nigel, for your question. He asked, so if our current contract expires in, say, September, do we need to wait uh, for next March to join? Uh, so it, it's this March, so literally what, a month and a half away um, that you need to confirm. So the 1st of March 22 is the is the final commitment date, which then gives me a nice um, kind of period between to judge uh, when I procure the contract. Uh, and obviously, if we're going to go flex, then it allows us to start executing those trades, um, you know, in advance. And therefore, again, the risk of purchasing at a high point is is alleviated a bit. So, um, yeah, 1st of March this year for 1st of October this year start. So everyone in Essex, uh, their contracts end the 30th of September, unless you've got some kind of strange new connection contract that might be different. Um, but uh, certainly if you're billed from NPower and SSE, um, generally it'll be 30th of September is the contract end date. So we'll be contracting for 1st of October. So yeah, just the decision date as to whether you want to go in the basket. If you want to be in the basket, then you need to let us know by the 1st of March. Obviously, you can, um, we can look at fixed prices uh, at any time, either now um, for a 1st of October start point. It's quite a common kind of misconception that people think that they have to renew their contract like literally a few weeks in advance of it or a month in advance of it. But I would definitely recommend away from that 
Um, I mean, it, it might well with the market dropping as it is at the moment from you know the astronomical highs that we've been at. Um, it might well be worth holding out for a little bit longer. That's fair to say, but obviously no one knows what the markets are going to do. They've, there's variables like political tensions with Russia. There's um, you know the uh, uh, supply a lack of supply um, storage within the gas networks over in Europe. Uh, we're currently at a, I think it was eleven percent deficit at the moment uh, on that compared to the previous year, which therefore means that there's just more pressure on the networks and the prices have just gone up to some ridiculous levels. But as we're starting to head towards spring, we're starting to see that a little bit more normal is starting to creep back in. But um, that just means that we're talking about ten percent. Well, uh, 10 pence per kilowatt price rises as opposed to 30 pence per kilowatt price rises um, but either way there's going to be some big big price rises I mean that's that's electricity but if you want any specific budgeting forecasts as well just to sort of let you know on that we can give you those budgetary forecasts uh, now for a first of October start uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're in the basket or out of the basket but where the market's going up 10 percent 20 percent a day at the moment um, clearly, that prediction will be based upon that point in time that we get that price. Um, but yeah, we can we can look at that for a first of October start now. Um, I've secured contracts eighteen months in advance before for various customers where the market's plummeted um, and uh, they want to lock in at that low that low market sentiment. Which uh, you know why wouldn't you? It's just unfortunate that this has come around now, and uh, you know clearly everyone's looking at uh, substantial price rises. Hopefully that helped. That was, a, that was a, maybe the politicians answer that it's a bit long winded. <laughs> no, that was really helpful. Thanks, Chris. Um, I've got a couple of questions that I'm going to combine because I feel like they're of a similar topic. Okay. Um, so it's from Lindy and Helen. So thank you for your questions. So just to clarify, um, I think just to go over something you might have said previously, uh, you said currently um, supply 375 Essex schools, but there are 22 in the basket. Is that correct? And then also, how many schools do you need to sign up to get the best value for schools? And is this guaranteed? Yeah, so, so we've got 375 customers in Essex at the moment. Um, we've got an additional 22 that are now signing up to the basket. So that three, 397, that would then take us to once, once they're all confirmed as live, which wouldn't be until this October anyway. So they're, they're 20 new customers, uh, 22 new customers, um, just to clarify on that. Um, a lot of the existing Essex schools do also operate within our, our sort of renewals baskets as well. And that's where you dovetail into that um, in future. But um, as I said earlier, I think normally you need that kind of um, sort of base, basic number of schools to get together to uh, allow for that economy of scale. And you know, if you've got a secondary school in there, that really helps. But, you know, five or six schools is kind of like your minimum at which point you say yeah actually a basket's kind of achievable now people will definitely the suppliers will definitely look at uh five or six supply uh, five or six schools worth of volume and say yeah i want that um so similar to a multi-academy trust kind of volume then uh as opposed to you know a single site by itself um so yeah there, there definitely is an economy of scale there even at the lower point but as i say we've got 22 commitments so far to the basket so we're way in, a, in advance of that um, there's a few multi academy trusts that I think are also going to go into it as well. Uh, there's already a couple of multi academy trusts in it already. Actually, there's, there's four schools in total that are part of Matt's uh, that are in it. So yeah, there's there's um, I think as I said earlier, the numbers are going to get up closer to 50, 60. In which case, yeah, it's a very very attractive basket uh, for suppliers to be wanting to, to to you know pitch into. Can I guarantee that the price is cheaper from the basket as opposed to what you would get on the day? I can't guarantee it because, um, I mean, a supplier, I'm trying to think of a supplier that, that might be a bit more like this. Eon, actually, yeah, Eon always used to be like this. So um, so the, the price, they, they only ever perceive a contracting entity as a contracting entity. So the fact that you're pricing along with lots of other contracting entities on the same day means nothing to them because their contract is, is that and their margin that they go in, at, again, is that. They still used to win a fair amount of business back in the day, actually, as well. But, um, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of the odd one out, if you like, whereas people like, you know, Gazprom, SSE, um, EDF, uh, they'll all be wanting to win these contracts and they'll all be pitching in, you know, at their very lowest margins. And 
you know, when you give, they all, you know, they'll be phoning me up constantly asking for feedback and, and how they look and, and what have you. And, um, you know, they'll be keen to, to sharpen their pencils as much as they possibly can to win you know, decent volumes. No doubt from their point of view as salespeople, it'll kind of make their year in, um, you know, in, in one fell swoop. So, you know, it's kind of make or break for some of them. Thank you for your honesty there. And we've got another question here from Lucy. She says, our school has installed solar roof panels, which we uh, which will be fully activated in half term. Therefore, our bills will not reflect usage. Does this affect our option to join the basket? Yeah, great question, Lucy. So um, uh, again, a really common um, kind of uh, question that, that comes up actually. Solar PV, uh, as long as you paid for it, um, and there's no commitment to a, a specific supplier as part of it, which I'm sure you know about if there was, um, then it's fine. Absolutely no issue at all. So I'd say probably about 50% of the schools we work with have solar PV on their roofs. Um, all it ultimately does is reduce the amount of uh, consumption that comes through your billable meter because your, your solar on the roof is subsidizing you know, X amount. Um, often it's not anywhere near the, the sort of total amount of consumption. So you'll always be dependent on electricity coming through your meter. Um, often a solar array will offset around 20% of your consumption. You know, it's important to uh, obviously from our perspective to understand that and in, within the comparisons use a fair consumption that we, you know, we deem as you know, reasonable because it might be that some suppliers have different ratios of standard charges to unit rates. Um, so, you know, if your consumption is going to drop, then actually maybe a different supplier would be more attractive that, that's got a, a higher unit rate, but a lower standing charge so that the standing charge doesn't overbear it. So, yeah, it's uh, to, one to get right, but I don't think, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time would ever have an impact on being able to be part of the basket. Fab. Okay, so we have another question here from Romy, and I think we might have time for one more after that. Um, I'll follow your lead on that, Chris. Uh, but Romy okay. asks, um, the government are talking about increasing the price gap for gas bills. Is that domestic only, or does that also impact business energy? Yeah, the, the price caps are only around um, domestic. Um, we're really lucky in domestic that they intervene in the way that they do, but uh, commercially, it doesn't matter who you are. Um, you know, we work with various different Formula One companies within the UK. They're still looking at contract renewal prices of 30 odd P per kilowatt hour, um, just the same as, as anyone else is, you know, in any other industry or segment. If it's if it's commercial energy that, that you're looking at, which you will have to, um, unfortunately, we're all we're all looking at, at the same wholesale market right now, which, as I said, is is getting better, but it's it's still um, you know, coming about with some pretty hefty price rises compared to what what we're used to. Uh, have we got time for one more after this question? Um, I don't mind. Yeah, I've got all day. We'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, the next one um, is an anonymous anonymous one. Uh, is yeah. this basket you talked about a combined gas and electricity contract? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a really good question, actually. I didn't clarify that, did I? Um, so we, uh, interestingly, there are a lot of suppliers that have licenses to provide either electricity or gas. Um, but generally, you find in the commercial energy world that, that one supplier will be good at one commodity and another supplier will be good at another commodity. Um, and it's just the way that they, they sort of specialise in different things. And uh, it's interesting as well where, like, net zero is, is a big thing nowadays um, you know, for, for the suppliers as well, that some of them are really concentrating their efforts on like electricity because they see that gas is a bit of a dying um, kind of supply, effectively it will be, can't keep burning dinosaurs forever. So um, yeah, so the answer to your question is the baskets will be individual per commodity. And by that, I mean gas, non half hourly electricity, where some schools will still have the the monthly build meters um, that aren't automatic potentially, um, but they still fall into the sort of uh, between half hourly um, and the domestic segment. So um, yeah, they'll, they'll be billed by N power at the moment uh, as such. And then the half hourly meters will be also uh, in their own sort of separate um, tender. Cause again, some suppliers are really attracted by half hourly metered supplies and some are much more attracted by the non half hourly meter supplies. So I'll be comparing the options for, for every supplier possible for each of the commodities that they, they will price for. Generally, as I say, 
I'd, I'd be surprised that I don't get at least six lots of quotations for, for each individual supply from different suppliers uh, just for one contract term, that'll be. So, uh, you know, you can imagine where you're reviewing, you know, potentially, you know, 60, 70 schools worth of meters. Um, we're looking at 12 months, 12, 24 months, 36 month options for, for, for a lot of schools, no doubt, um, where we're sort of, you know, judging which one's the best value. Um, so there's a there's a lot of judgment calls and a lot of calculations that need to be done to make sure that it's all done properly. But uh, so it's it's certainly worked successfully over the years for, for all of our customers in Essex that have formed part of it. Thanks, Chris. Um, so the next one is: Will there be any further charges for your service beyond the supplier rebates? Uh, so the answer is no. There isn't. Um, the only the only element that um, could be billed from somebody is metering if you've got a half hourly meter. Uh, but there's no, there's no kind of commitment you have to use us for that. Uh, if you've not got your own metering provider, um, you're probably paying it on your NPower invoices at the moment as a mop charge and a data collector charge. Um, those elements we would look to, to try and combine into our service and ultimately we would bill for that. Um, if you need any information around it, that's absolutely cool. We can go through that and put that all in writing for you. But um, ultimately, you, you should be paying for it somehow to someone. Um, so, yeah, it's just a matter of us taking control of it. There's a lot of benefits, actually, from us taking control of the metering on a half hourly electricity supply. We don't need, don't need it on the non half hourly or the gas, by the way. So that, that doesn't relate to anyone that's only got those. It's only half hourly electricity. And that the benefit is around us knowing if if the half hourly meter uh, connection goes down for whatever reason. So um, you know, perhaps there's some damage to the cable, or um, you know some rodents got in, or something. Or sometimes, like if it if it snows, hopefully it doesn't, because that'll make my prices go up. But if it snows, that it blocks the uh, the the readings from going back to the suppliers automatically. So. Um, we need to know about it if there's an estimated uh, billing issue and therefore we rectify it and, and deal with that for you. Um, so, yeah, it, it kind of works that. But, um, yeah, to, to manage the supply agreements, know that we get our, our fee from the suppliers um, and, uh, and that's it, basically. Uh, I've got another question here. Do we pay invoices direct to suppliers or through Zenergy? Yeah, great question. Uh, so, again, <clears throat> the, the supplier bills come to us. Uh, we check them, we then send them to you for payment. So you will always pay whoever the supplier is that we've nominated. Um, so let's say it's Crown Gas and Power that was successful with your tender. Uh, the Crown Gas and Power invoice comes into us electronically. We validate it automatically. Uh, it goes through all of our rigorous checks. If there's an issue, we deal with it and send it on to you and say, look, there's an issue, but we're dealing with X. Um, but if we say it's validated and it's okay for payment, then the payment will be made obviously by yourselves to Crown Gas and Power. If for whatever reason debt accumulates on an account, we will manage the debt. Um, so it's I think it's if it goes beyond three months, we will then communicate with you and say, look, you've got some age debt on your accounts. I, I don't know if you're perhaps missing an invoice, uh, you know, you've overlooked an email or, or something like that, perhaps, um, and obviously send you copies of things if this is, you know, if you've got anything missing. Um, so, uh, and what I was just going to say on, in terms of payments is uh, not many suppliers are accepting check anymore. Um, so just, a, you know, a big heads up on that, that uh, direct debit payments are uh, preferred uh, and backs payments. Um, and, and we can you know, negotiate on the payment terms on that. Generally, we, we negotiate at least 21 day payment terms for backs uh, up to sort of 28 days for some suppliers as well. So, um, yeah, just to, to bring you into the loop. Thanks, Chris. Um, a couple of people are asking if it's possible to get a copy of the slides after this. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, yeah, I can just email them over as a, like a PDF copy. If, if you just drop me a line, um, like whoever wants a copy, just let me know and I'll, I'll ping, you, ping you those over. So just please take note of Chris's contact details on the screen there. Um, we are going to have to wrap things up, but if we haven't answered your questions directly, uh, we will be uh, following up um, following, following this webinar. So thank you so much for your questions. And also just to go back to one of the previous slides, and um, there's some great advice on the website, lots of resources available, and there is 
um, some content around is your energy consultant reliable, ethical and transparent. There's a really handy checklist on there just to help you make a decision uh, for your future purchases. Um, all that's left to say is thank you so much for attending. Thanks so much, Chris, for all your information and all your knowledge sharing. And everyone have a great day. Thank you very much. Cheers, everyone. Take care.